Hi, you're listening to What the FFF, a show inspired by the FabFitFun community where we sit down with experts from our team, brand founders, and other fun guests to talk all things beauty, fashion, fitness, wellness, and home. My name is Amanda. I'm the manager of merchandising strategy here at FabFitFun. And today I am joined by co-founders of Array, Sif and Nish, who are going to talk to us all about digestion, manifestation, and most importantly, their viral bloat supplement featured in this year's Summer Box. Reminder, if you wanna see the products we're talking about, be sure to tune in on our YouTube channel. And if you're not a FabFitFun member yet, stick around till the end of the video and we'll have a code for you to join. Let's get into it. Hi, Sif. Hi, Nish. Welcome Hi. to the show. We are so excited to have you today. Your Array Bloat product is in our summer box, which is really perfect timing for summer traveling because people are eating out, they're struggling with indigestion and bloating, and therefore it's a really good product to pack in their bags. So I'm excited to learn more about it today as, as well as your founder story. We're so excited and we we're so stoked to be in the box too. <laughs> Incredible. Um, so let's start from the beginning. Array launched in 2020. And what I really love about your founder's story is that it launched due to some health concerns you were dealing with and you wanted to solve for yourself. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a bit about that journey? Yeah, so I had gone through personal health issues involving my immune system for a really, really long time. And ultimately in my early 20s, I ended up fracturing a rib from a chronic cough. And when I went to my doctor, she prescribed codeine to me and essentially there was no answers for like what I could do to ensure something like this wouldn't happen again. And so at that point I was quite frustrated because I was like, I've been doing this, living in the cycle of getting sick, taking antibiotics, getting better for my entire life. So is there something else that I can do? And so that's when I kind of decided to look into holistic things, which back then, this is like 10 years ago, it was mm -hmm. not cute, it was not cool, there was no air one, okay? There was no <laughs> nothing, okay? And so that's when I got interested in the area and started to guinea pig on myself saw huge improvements. And then obviously we both started guinea pigging together, you know, because mm -hmm. I saw improvements within my immune system. And so then I was like, okay, can we do something when we are fatigued? Can we take things when we're having digestive health issues? And so that was kind of like the thought process behind the brand. We saw this huge opportunity in wellness mm -hmm. where we thought the skincare category was really interesting because I still remember when I was young and, um, you know, I'd go to my mom's bathroom and her skincare was just very like plain. Mm -hmm. In the last 10 years, there's been so much development in skincare where now we're excited to use skincare products. Like Nish has like a 10 step routine of his own, oh, you know? Oh, we gotta learn about that. So <laughs> like, it, we just wanted to bring that same experience to wellness. And so mm -hmm. the goal was to create 100% natural targeted supplements that would work really quickly and were really beautiful as well. So you actually want to use them. Yes, definitely. And I feel like for bloating, especially sometimes the supplement bottles are just like Tragic. not very cute. You don't want to take it out with you. You don't want to tell people what you're taking. But um, this packaging is so nice. Well, yeah, because we found that, you know, with a lot of supplements, you kind of stash them away in your yeah. medicine cabinet. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to create something that you could really integrate into your routine. So it's really important that everything you created was really beautiful, mm -hmm. but it was also really high quality and high integrity as a product. And so with our company and especially these blow capsules, everything we create, they work in under one hour. Mm -hmm. So you, you feel the effects of the products in under one hour. And that's kind of been the thesis of our company. And so when Sif was dealing with her immunity issues, like we were starting fixing with like, okay, how do we fix our this overall health? It was like, okay, I want to get better as quickly as possible. And back then it was like, let's try to get better with our immunity, you know, in within a day. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, we can also fix digestive health issues in under one hour. So that's kind of where we came up with the products from, mm -hmm. but it was really important that they worked. They're really pretty. And that you actually like felt the effects of them because most yeah. supplements you don't really feel the effects of. Definitely. So bloat was one of the first two products you launched. What made you, you know, start with this issues before you expanded the the brand. So something that Nish and I realized is anytime we would be in rooms with our friends, especially women, everyone would talk about how bloated and anxious they were, you know, and yeah. it was it seemed to be this like universal issue that everyone was talking about, whether we were at brunch or dinner or whatever, you know, 
And so we decided that we were going to, we, we wanted to make sure that that was actually factually correct. And mm-hmm. so we went and spoke to doctors and something that we learned is that it is an issue that is extremely common, both of those things, and that they're also both linked. So mm-hmm. when we're bloated, we get anxious. When we're anxious, we get bloated. So, you know, when we, like, we, we all live in lives that are so high stress. Mm-hmm. There's so much that's expected of us. I can talk about specifically women because yeah. it's like a lot of people are moms. A lot of women work. A lot of women feel like they have all of these obligations. So they're stressed and their digestion gets compromised mm-hmm. because of that. And so that was really the reason we decided to have bloat, especially as like our very first product product because it was such a kind of a universal issue. Mm -hmm. And when we're bloated, I feel like we can't show up as the best versions of ourselves. You know, Mm -hmm. we're just thinking about how uncomfortable we feel. Mm -hmm. And that just kind of diminishes our ability to show up and be like crushing it at life. Definitely. I mean, bloating has ruined a lot of my trips, I have to say, just because when you're uncomfortable, it's all you can think about and you can't be present. So I think it's really important. And what I really appreciate about this supplement in particular is that you can take it after you eat because um, I tried a bunch of supplements that I had to take 30 minutes before the meal and half the time I'd forget. I go to a restaurant, I forgot the supplement and then I couldn't do much after. Yeah, Mm. for sure. So yeah, you can take these, uh, you know, both preventatively and reactively. Mm -hmm. The reason we like doing it afterwards is because, okay, it's like, depending on how bloated you are, you know how to dose yourself accordingly. Mm -hmm. So we always say, if you've had kind of a salad with beans, then you take two. Mm -hmm. If if you've had like pasta or pizza, you can take three. And if you have had a big Thanksgiving dinner, then you can kind of have four. So you can like really dose yourself according to how bloated you feel. But it's such a good, uh, you know, reactive way after you meal to take capsules. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. And then, um, so for anybody who wants to take it daily, do the benefits accrue over time? Yeah, so the we so we ran clinical trials on the product mm-hmm. like uh, on the, clinical the third party clinical trials on the whole product and we actually ran it over an 8 week period. And so what's really interesting is the feeling of bloating and that kind of feeling of your distended stomach, it mm-hmm. reduces the more you take it. So you feel the effects in under 1 hour, but if you take it after 8 weeks, you actually don't get that bloated to begin with. And also we saw a reduction in heartburn, we also saw a reduction in inflammatory markers. So that was really interesting as well, so mm-hmm. it's really helpful to take over a long period of time. Yeah, it's a super versatile product we really wanted to create something that people could turn to in the moment but Mm -hmm. also something that would have you know benefits over time as well some of the benefits are definitely due to the ingredients around this product they're very clean how important was it to um you know for the ingredients to be well researched and um have been clinically trialed so when we came up with the ingredients for the product we were like okay what actually causes bloating and like how do we fix bloating by looking at the root causes of a cause bloating. Mm-hmm. So when you take a look at it, it's like a few, very few things that are really common across most people. One of them is like gas buildup. You're eating the food, there's buildup of gas, and that just causes a lot of, you know, uncomfortableness and bloating. The second one is that you actually lack the digestive enzymes to break down your food. Mm-hmm. So your food is literally not being broken down. And the third one is, is actually not moving through your intestines properly. And so you're just not being able to process the food quickly enough through your like transit system. Mm-hmm. And so those three things are like, okay, let's go focus on some of those things and a couple of other things. So our product has a digestive enzyme as well as five other herbs kind of target all of these kind of specific issues. And we use really high dosages of those ingredients. So it's like just six things and nothing else with the right dosages. And it kind of targets exactly what I talked about, which is why it works so well. And what I've read is that um, you not only, um, you know, research each individual ingredient, but you actually tested the product as a whole, which from what I understand is unique to supplements. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. So we ran a third party clinical trial and Mm -hmm. that's what it did. So it essentially tested the product as a full formula for its efficacy. And so it does what it says it does. It's not just that the ingredients say what they do. Like those are also, of course, like clinically proven each ingredient, but as a whole, the formula is able to kind of like help with bloating, not just in the moment, but over time as well. The reason that's really important is because it's really easy to go online and find a clinically trialed ingredient. Mm -hmm. So you can literally go to Google, you can look up an ingredient and you can probably find a clinical trial around it. Mm -hmm. And so what a lot of companies will do is they will use an ingredient, 
they may not even use the clinically trialed ingredient itself. So let's find an ingredient that's been clinically trialed. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, we use an ingredient that has clinical trials on the internet. Mm -hmm. Now we have a clinically trialed product. You know what I mean? And it's really misleading because that's mm -hmm. not actually the case. And so it's really important to see, okay, the ingredients that I use in my product, how do they work together? Mm -hmm. And have I done clinicals on my actual product to say that that's how it works um, as a whole? So when you have like pharmaceutical drugs, that's what they do. They go, you do in clinical ingredients on the entire product itself. You don't do uh, clinical trials on the actual ingredient only. And so this is this is really important to us because we wanted to make sure the product really works. And um, they're expensive to do and they take time to do, but it was really important to us. Definitely. And I feel like that's something a lot of consumers wouldn't know. Like you would never know that other supplements don't do that. So um, it's really great to know. What do the trials entail? Do, does a group of sub, um, customers take the supplement over time to see the results? Yeah, exactly. So essentially what you do is you kind of have a randomly selected uh, group of people. Mm -hmm. And then for us, we kind of select the people who have IBS symptoms mm -hmm. and other kind of stomach issues. And then we said, okay, you guys go and try this product out in a very kind of clinical way. So there's all these metrics around how you try the product, when you try them, how many you try, mm -hmm. whether it's a placebo or the actual pill, you do all the comparisons mm -hmm. and you do like a period, uh, you do testing over a specific period of time. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, how do the results look? And then you kind of have like satisfaction markers in the clinical trials, which is like, okay, uh, this is what we want to achieve. So how, uh, out of scale of one to 10, you know, how bloated do you feel before and how bloated do you feel after taking the product? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the different questions you asked. We had about 50 different questions that we asked these customers mm -hmm. over the period of eight weeks. And uh, it, it, the results came back for the product, like really you know, good, awesome. good results, yeah. really positive results. We had like 86% of cons consumers who felt, um, you know, significantly less bloated after trying the product for one hour mm -hmm. and an even a higher amount who felt less bloated after eight weeks of trying the product. So it was a really like strong clinical trials on it, but that's mm -hmm. kind of how the trials usually work. Great. And your background is not in um, medicine. I know you were a content creator before and you worked a really impressive corporate job. Um, but from what I understand, you worked with a doctor to develop not only this product, but all products in your line. Is that correct? Yeah, so we we worked with we have a really close friend in Canada, uh, and her name is Natalie. We worked with her actually on this bloat product specifically, the bloat and the calm product, mm -hmm. because she owns the leading clinic in all of Canada for digestive health issues as well as mental health uh, disorder, eating or, disorders or eating disorders, and kind of. When you're working with it, she's like, look, guys, I actually see these issues all the time mm -hmm. and uh, I create them on a very specific basis. But mm -hmm. like, why don't we work together to work on something in a more kind of holistic way? Mm -hmm. And so we had worked with her very initially on some of these ingredients. Now we actually have a team in house that we work with just because the science changes so much. And then the papers and the studies, they say change so much that it's really important for us to be kind of on top of it internally because doctors, they're amazing and we always use them as like consultants and we mm -hmm. work with them. But the thing is that in order to be really kind of at the leading edge of creating your product, you have to be so um, in the papers, in the weeds of reading these things, exactly. which, you know, the doctors have gone to school years and years ago. So yeah. they don't really remember everything. Yeah. So now we have that. But initially, yeah, we work with the doctor to come up with these products. Yeah, and I feel like you're really in tune with your consumers. You know, you connect with them on social media. And I imagine that's what inspires you um, or influencers what product you launch next. So how has the line expanded since launching this product? So uh, you're completely right, Amanda. For us, our consumers are like our number one priority. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because when we launched you know, Array, we actually named the brand Array because we wanted to solve an array of different problems or have an array of different solutions. <laughs> That's so cute. Isn't it? Yeah. So over time, though, something we realized was that our consumers were really struggling specifically with digestive health. And, mm -hmm. you know, we solved bloating for them. And then people started to complain about the fact that they were dealing with constipation or like severe heartburn. And so we started then to create products that kind of solved their needs, you know? Mm -hmm. So we launched Heartburn last year. And that was, again, like a real, you know, response to what people were asking for, you mm -hmm. know? Same thing. We just launched our constipation product. Um, what was it like last month before last, I think. Mm -hmm. And again, that was also a response to the fact that people were talking about the fact that they were constipated, whether it was cr chronic or they were dealing with it in like, acute scenarios where, for example, maybe they were traveling or going through a period of high stress. And so mm -hmm. not only do those products work amazingly on their own. They also kind of like work as a line. So we see a lot of cu customers taking both 
constipation and bloat, or they'll be taking calm and bloat, you know? So it's not just one product alone. It's also like sometimes people have multiple issues that they're targeting together. So um, we love our customers. We listen to every single thing that they say. And Mm -hmm. oftentimes I would say like 99% of the time we're kind of like, like producing products based on the things that they have asked for as well. That's incredible. And I think that's why our customers will really resonate with the brand as well, because we do the same. We have such a, um, you know, devotion to our members and we mm-hmm. listen to everything um, they say. And a lot of the time they tell us they want to try new supplements, especially when it comes to bloating, just because it's just a, such a hot topic. So, yeah. um, again, excited to introduce or reintroduce them to to your product. I'm definitely adding to cart. Like after this conversation, <laughs> I just came back from traveling and I feel like I needed all of that. Oh my yeah. God. While, so, while traveling, yeah. I cannot even tell you the lifesaver this is. Like we were, we went skiing in January. We go every January to ski for Nish's birthday. And the food that you eat is like so much heavier. It's like cheese and, you know, like oh, just bread, yeah. just the sheer amount of bread and cheese that you consume. I <laughs> yeah. became cheese at the end. <laughs> but honestly, like bloat was what got me through that trip. Like mm-hmm. not just during it, but even while we're flying, it's so hard on our digestive system. You know, like you're in this like high altitude, you're skipping time zones sometimes, even if it's a couple of hours, mm-hmm. our bodies are, it's interesting. We've moved so far when it comes to technology, mm-hmm. but biologically our bodies are still like, you know, from way back when, which is why like our bodies really like routine and it's, you know, difficult to kind of endure like high altitudes or like a change in time differences so drastically so quickly. Mm -hmm. So bloat helps with that so much. Even when I'm on the plane, I literally get on the flight and I take three bloats preventatively Mm -hmm. because it just helps me so much. When I land, I'm so comfortable. Mm -hmm. If I eat something on the flight, it's not setting my stomach off. Like Mm -hmm. like in-flight bloating is so oh, it's real. real. Yeah. yeah, it's a thing. You feel and like a balloon. Yeah, it's insane. You your feet so, are swollen. Your stomach's swollen. It's a yeah. whole thing, yeah. you know. And so this product, it helps you digest the food. It helps again. What Nish said, it helps with inflammation markers as well. So it's like for travel. This is I I, I cannot board a flight without my blow capsules. I absolutely cannot. <laughs> Definitely. It's so important. I mean, as I mentioned, I've struggled with a lot of issues myself and I feel the same. As soon as I hop on the plane, I am already, all I'm thinking about is, will I have the right foods to eat so that I don't feel Mm -hmm. bad? And so it's really great to have something that, um, you know, really helps with that. Um, and so if you have your own podcast called the dream bigger podcast, and you talk about an array, if you say <laughs> of, of issues, not only starting from healthy habits, productivity tips, manifestations, um, all about digestion. So selfishly, I'm going to ask if you had to choose one healthy habit that was a game changer in your routine, apart from taking array, of yeah. course, um, what would it be? Where should we start? Oh my God. I mean, there's so many, but I'm actually going to keep it very, very simple here because this actually is, I think something most people have access to, I would say working out. Okay. So I love to strength train Mm -hmm. and the science behind strength training and the impact that it has specifically on women is something that just cannot be ignored. Right. Mm -hmm. Not just from oh, like I look so good, okay? It just goes so much beyond that. There's a longevity piece, you know? Mm -hmm. One of the first things to go as we get older is our grip. And that actually um, is a marker of our health span. So Mm -hmm. how long we're gonna live healthily and also how long we're gonna live as well, right? I had no idea. Right, and so when you're going to the gym and doing strength training, you're actually not just like everything else, but we're working on our grip strength, you know, like we're doing deadlifts, we're doing things that are actually like, you know, pushing our grip to get stronger, you know? So that's just one thing. And for me as well, like there's a huge mental health component too, right? So even if someone doesn't want to strength train, okay, no problem, find movement that you love because Mm -hmm. You know, we both Nish and I have like very stressful jobs. And I think, you know, you can agree with me that like our Mm -hmm. like our gym membership has saved us from many a mental breakdowns, you know, because it really does help you have perspective. Mm -hmm. Endorphins are a real thing, you Mm -hmm. know, so it's a simple, you know, tip that I have Mm -hmm. based on so many conversations that I've had. But it's probably the thing that everyone has access to in some way or the other. And Mm -hmm. it's just, it's the most life-changing thing. That's 
that's a great tip. I can definitely kind of, I resonate with that because I love working out as well, mostly for the mental health aspect. Mm -hmm. Like it's uh, an important part of my day. And actually that's where um, I really recognize red flags regarding my digestions because I would be going to my workouts and I could no longer enjoy even that hour to myself mm -hmm. because I was uncomfortable and in yes. pain. And that's when I yeah. was like, okay, if I'm leading a healthy lifestyle and I'm going to my workout and I'm struggling, something's wrong and I need to figure this mm -hmm. out. So. I definitely agree with you. There's this mind to gut connection that's really important and, and working out feeds into that. Mm -hmm. What is one wellness trend you would never subscribe to on the flip side of that? There are so many wellness trends out there right now. Oh my gosh. Which one you'd reject? Honestly, I don't really keep track of trends mm -hmm. because I feel like they come and go so quickly. Like I remember at one point everyone was talking about food combining and I'm like, this I don't, I just, I can't even, like I didn't give a time of day yeah. because I don't know for me until there is actual mm -hmm. science behind it, I don't just want to do something, you know, cause there's so much every month there's something new, like someone's talking about something or the other, like it's just a trend, you know, and I want to implement things that I can sustainably keep up with and that I know will have a scientific kind of change in like mm -hmm. my overall well-being. So I would say food combining is like one that I I just like never, I never subscribe yep. to it, never going to. And yeah, yeah it's very that. overwhelming seeing everything out there and trying to follow. It's truly impossible. Oh my gosh. Yeah, totally impossible. Definitely. And um, Nish, as I mentioned, you pivoted from a corporate job um, to starting your own company. Is there something you wish you knew at the beginning of the journey um, that you could you know, share with our listeners? Well, I think that it was uh, one of the hardest things to do was to quit the job, mm -hmm. to know when to quit the job to work in a very full time. Mm -hmm. Because I think we knew, both Sif and I, that the company was going to be successful. Mm -hmm. But uh, we were actually funding um, like the inventory of the company or like the overall cost of the company using our salaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, a huge portion of this was coming from the corporate job salaries because it was a technology job. You know, you, you make so much money. And so right. we're really using all of that to fund the company. Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point, it was, became a point where like I was working literally around the clock. Mm -hmm. So I would work the hours and during the day and then the job was not an easy job. So it's actually like a very strenuous job to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then I'd be working till three or four in the morning on array as well. And it came to a point where I think I was sleeping like three or four hours a night mm -hmm. and just so I could do both of them at the same time. And so me and Steph decided, we're like, okay, let's take a vacation and really figure out what we want to do here. Mm -hmm. And I think that it was really helpful to do like a fear setting exercise where like, okay, what am I exactly like super scared of mm -hmm. here? Like what what's going to happen um, if I uh, quit the job and work in array? Mm -hmm. And what are all the wrong things that could happen? And what are all the positive things that could happen? Mm -hmm. And so it was really important to like step back from the day to day of this to be able to think of that mm -hmm. and then uh, you know make the decision. So actually after the vacation, I ended up quitting my job about a month after. Mm -hmm. And it was the best thing that we did because we were really able to provide even more hours and more attention mm -hmm. and more time to think on the company. Mm -hmm. I think something that's really important is that the time that you allocate to just like think about things mm -hmm. is really important. It's not like, oh, I have to do all these different things. That's really, that's really great. But it's so important to always have like 20% of your brain mm -hmm. just like available to think. Um, think on like like very high level things. What I want to do in life, what I want to do in the future, what I want to accomplish like mm -hmm. five months from now, what am I working on for the remainder of the week? And you need time to just like sit down, think, or go for a walk and think. And not having that time is really just detrimental to whatever your pursuit is. So I, I wish I had known that a little bit earlier because mm -hmm. then I would have obviously, you know, quit my job earlier, mm -hmm. but um, everything worked out really well. Uh, but it, it was something that you really had to like take time out of yourself to mm -hmm. think about and like, really pull out of yourself, which is a very difficult thing to do for most people. Mm -hmm. And it's not even about, about just starting a company. It could be for like, anything in, in, in your mm -hmm. life that you're trying to accomplish, like whatever, yeah, whatever it might be. Definitely, because we're so busy in our life trying to kind of chase all of our responsibilities that, you know, we blink and four months have passed in the year. And, uh, you know, I had already forgotten about my goals yeah. from January 1st. Yeah. I need to take time to, um, to reevaluate. Um, something I've heard you talk about before is kind of manifesting this um, journey to the successful business and uh, moving from Canada here to um, grow the business. Can you tell us a bit about that? I'm really big on manifestation. Like mm -hmm. I just, I think that whatever- like, Sif is like master manifester. Like when I say <laughs> literally, I'm like That's Sif- incredible. No, literally, I'm like Sif, I want 
Um, <laughs> I want the craziest uh, dinner on Friday at a place that's impossible to get into. Just manifest it. And she'll oh do it. <laughs> she'll figure out a way to get us in somewhere. How do you do like, that? Share your secrets. I don't secrets. even know. And then her brother is like, Sif, I want a job in the U.S. Can you please just manifest this for me? <laughs> now, I, I think Sif is just like a magician, okay? Yeah. Whatever we want in life, like Sif, hey Sif, can you just manifest this random thing to come to life, please? Let's like, have a chat. Let's manifest yeah. together. Like, like, so genius. good at that. <laughs> three wishes <laughs> yeah yeah literally and, okay so it's it's funny like uh, yeah like it's a joke but uh, honestly like i i really think anyone has the power to do this okay mm -hmm. first i think that i I'm almost like delusional in what I think is possible, mm -hmm. which I think, by the way, if you are starting a business, you kind of need that delusion. You almost need like such blind conviction in your delusion that you know it's possible. Mm -hmm. Because if you know it's possible, you're kind of just gonna go for it, you know? And so I think that was the thought process behind Array. I just knew when we started it, I knew it was gonna be a big thing. I knew that it was the future. Like I just, ha I can't explain to you how I knew. And then from mm -hmm. there, it was just putting in the work to make it happen, you know? And thankfully, like in terms of hard skills, Nish and I have certain hard skills that were, you know, that took the company to from X to Y, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and I knew that we were capable of making that happen, you mm -hmm. know? Like we knew that we could outwork anyone out there like we're both extremely hard workers and we also are very well aware of our skill sets you know mm -hmm. so you know of course there's the manifestation like you know quote unquote woo woo piece which is i think more than anything just having full conviction that whatever it is that you mm -hmm. want it, it it's it's at, like you have as much possibility as having it as anyone else mm -hmm. and my thought process has always been like Say I look at someone who's really successful, right? Mm -hmm. I've never in my life felt like, oh my gosh, like why do they have it? It's always been to me like, oh my God, if they have it, that means I can have it too, mm -hmm. you know? Like, and I think that reframe has always allowed, and I can, I can speak to Nish as well, like it's probably both of us to believe that whatever we set our sights on, mm -hmm. we can we can have it, you know? And I think like, you know, that is what manifestation is, you mm -hmm. know, just having full conviction, in what you want and mm. just never settling until you get it. So yeah. Yeah, believing in yourself and betting on yourself. Um, tell us your secrets. Besides the belief in yourself, do you do you write your manifestations down? I do. do you visualize? Tell us how to do it. So I I've been journaling every single day for 10 years now. I cannot mm -hmm. believe it's been 10 years, but that's how long it's been. Um, and I am really specific about what I want mm -hmm. and I write it down all the time. Like the craziest story I have is actually like our house, right? I mean, so much has transpired. Mm -hmm. That's like almost exact of like what I've written down, but I can't like from a, like I think from like a tangible perspective, it is because like you set your, if you're writing something down constantly, you know that it's almost like a real thing for you. Mm -hmm. So with our house, for example, I would write down every single day this like my dream house, okay? And it wasn't because like it was some chore. I was just really excited to live in this like fictional dream house, you know? And I was really specific about what it would look like, the feeling that I'd have when I'd get up every morning, you know, which area it was in. And this is back when, by the way, like we hadn't even moved to the US yet. We were still Canadian residents. Mm -hmm. We were in the process of trying to move to the US. It hadn't happened yet. And lo and behold, we moved into that fictional house. Like it just, it's like the craziest thing, but I was just, that's what I wanted. Yeah. And it just happened. <laughs> it's incredible. You wrote the script yourself. Yeah, literally. Yeah. But you know, I think like, as when we think about the manifestation piece of it, I think that immediately after the, here's what I want, mm -hmm. majority of the time is truly spent on like, how do, how do I do it? Mm -hmm. And so that's really important because sometimes we'll sit there and I think that the, what do I want is really important mm -hmm. because a lot of a lot of people slash things will get in the way of that. Mm -hmm. We have me and Sif have found, especially as we've been building the company, and you know we have investors and we have customers and all these different people. Mm -hmm. that, that everybody drags you in a different direction. You know, someone is like, "Oh, like why don't you guys go and create um, energy drinks? Why don't mm -hmm. you guys?" You know, they, 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 yeah. all these all these different requests from all these different people that really distract you in different ways. And it's really important to um, ask the question of what you want and and how big you want to be, and just like mm -hmm. remind yourself of that because it's easy to kind of lose your um, vision per mm -hmm. se. And you know when people say, oh, like, yeah, he was a visionary. I, I really 
think that what that means is that mm. you've just spent the time to think of how big your idea or your accomplishments or mm. your goals can be. And I think that that word is a really strong and like really daunting word almost. Mm -hmm. But all it is is just like, hey, have you taken the time to be like, yeah, th the thing that I'm working on, here's the here's how big I think I can make it. Mm -hmm. And so thinking of that and what that can be is really important. But immediately after, we spend 90% of the time, okay, like how do we get, how do we actually get there? Mm -hmm. So I think when you combine the two, that's when like the manifestation actually really happens. But uh, uh, I, I think it's so important to do both of those yeah, things. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And just to, just to like zoom in, on that a little bit, right? Like if someone doesn't know what we mean, mm -hmm. say your dream is a big promotion at work, right? Mm -hmm. And you write about that thing that you mm -hmm. want. Okay, but what, like that, that version of you who has that promotion, mm -hmm. what are their daily habits? What are they working on? What are they doing every single day? And I think like when you start to become those things, mm -hmm. the thing that you want comes to you as well, because that means that you're actually doing the work to be there. Like Definitely. a really good example is if you think of who you were when you were 18 years old or mm -hmm. 17 or 10 or 15, whatever, pick whatever age, right? Mm -hmm. It definitely was not the version of yourself that, you are today mm -hmm. because that version of yourself didn't have the habits or the belief systems or whatever it was to have the life that you have today. You mm -hmm. didn't have the work ethic. You just, it, you just were not the same version of you. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that you want in the future, it's like, you need to identify what habits you need to have and like what steps you need to take in order to even get there from like a very like action oriented perspective. And I think once you're clear on that, then you can move towards that direction. I, I also, sorry, just to add to what I said real quickly, I think that uh, a lot of people, or maybe I'm just talking about myself here, it feels really weird to disassociate a, with a, a past version of yourself. Mm -hmm. So something that I've realized is that whenever you think of where you want to be and wh what kind of person you have to be to get there, you have to really, you know, change who you are fundamentally. Mm -hmm. So, for example, all of a sudden your habits change. All of a sudden your um, frame of thinking changes. Mm -hmm. Your um, ability to execute changes. And all these things mean that you're no longer the person that you were mm -hmm. um, maybe as recently as six months ago. Mm -hmm. And that seems really uncomfortable because all of a sudden the people that you knew six months ago, they know actually a very different version of you. And right. that that may mean that you, non you no longer actually associate with those people or it just may mean that the version of, the, of you that they know is completely different, mm -hmm. which is like a very weird thing to get uh, to kind of get comfortable with. Mm -hmm. But it's really important to do so because then what happens is you're always kind of like improving yourself and you're always like thinking differently and mm -hmm. always pushing to be the person that you want to be. And it means that uh, you're changing very quickly, which is actually a very good thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that doing that is so important to like uh, this whole manifestation process. Mm -hmm. It just means that you're moving towards the person you want to be and you're really leaving behind the person you were as weird of a thing as it may seem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It seems like what's key to your successful story is really those action items because I Absolutely. think a lot of us when we think manifestation, you know, it's really easy to imagine yourself in a big house oh my gosh, with yeah. your own company selling successful products. But those action items is like where the work begins and that's how you can action the dream. Basically. Yeah, you can't be sitting there and like daydreaming all day yeah. and like not lifting a finger like that's not like there is like a big, big action component. You can't just sit there. And yeah. like there's this like funny saying that I don't know if it's common, but my mom has told me this, that like, you know, there is this like really like religious guy and he's like, please, God, please let me win the lottery, like just praying every day. And then one day God comes down and he's like, well, buy the damn ticket, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. and so that's it's so like, true. you know what I mean? So yeah. like we have to do something. <laughs> yeah, you have to take the first step or yeah. else like you'll never you'll never get there. Um, amazing. So really quickly um, to wrap up our conversation, I wanted to play a rapid fire game with you um, and kind of ask you about some of popular wellness trends and ask you if they're in or out in mm. your opinion. Ooh, love this. Yeah. Pass or pass. <laughs> so the first one I have a feeling you're going to love that's magnesium helping digestion and sleep. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hard yes. I saw you just um, launched, launched a magnesium yeah. supplement, um, which I definitely got to try. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we are. It's very, very good. I know that this is a uh, rapid fire, but everyone needs to go check out that supplement because <laughs> yeah. magnesium is so important. A, okay, great. Um, the next one is personally hard for me to implement, and that's drinking apple cider vinegar. How do you Pass. feel about that? 
So, it's bad for your, your your teeth and your cavities and things like that. No, it's actually good for your blood glucose levels though. But oh, you don't that. have to you don't have yeah, to drink but, it. You can have it in the form of a salad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So As I do not need to shot it on an empty stomach. No, you definitely don't. Okay. Um, okay. You can something that you can do. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with glucose goddess. So she's the one who kind of made the apple cider vinegar thing like really oh. hot. So she's like a blood glucose expert and someone, I think her like field of focus is biochemistry. So everything she does is very driven in data. And she was the one who was like, you know, apple cider vinegar, incredible for blood glucose levels. That's why people mm -hmm. are like shooting it. You don't have to do that, okay? okay? What you can do is also have, say for example, some arugula and you mix that with a little bit of olive oil and some vinegar and it <laughs> achieves the same thing. You can, so. yes, you can do that. But most people are taking shots taking of this shots. thing. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I've tried shots and I have to hold my nose. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can also mix it with like a big glass of water. You taste yeah. it less. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can definitely have it with salad. That's a really good tip because the thing about certain wellness trends, I definitely tried that one is it's so... Uh, it's so not fun to do that. Like, I'm never going to keep it up, right? No. I try to keep it up and then I take yeah. a break because it's no. like a, a part of my morning that I dread. So Im implementing it in um, your other kind of your general diet is much more helpful. Yeah, it has to be sustainable. No matter yeah. what you do, it has to be sustainable for you. Like, for example, I remember celery juice was like such a hot topic and Yes, like it works for a lot of my friends, but for me, I hate the taste of celery. Mm -hmm. So that just was not a trend that I could keep up with because mm -hmm. I like I would gag every morning while drinking my juice. And mm -hmm. I was like, why? Why am I like doing this torturous activity? I'm sure yeah. there's like other ways I can get these nutrients in. <laughs> Definitely. It has to be sustainable. Yeah. That's key. Um, the next one is one, again, I'm having trouble implementing, and that's not drinking caffeine on an empty stomach. So I love to wake up and have coffee first thing in the morning, but lately I'm hearing that's not good for you. <laughs> so the science actually shows that this is completely like it's it it's different person to person. OK, mm -hmm. so, of course, this is a difficult thing to tell because it 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 depends on how you metabolize caffeine. Mm -hmm. The best way to tell is like, for example, are you someone who gets jittery when you drink coffee or not? Mm -hmm. If you are someone who gets jittery, it probably means that you have a more difficult time breaking down the caffeine mm -hmm. and it is a stressor on the body, which is why, you know, people are told to have some protein or some food before you have your coffee. Of course, that's an ideal case scenario. Mm -hmm. For me personally, I still have coffee on an empty stomach. I don't know, I could change my mind in a few months, but yeah. for me, I'm not someone who, has, who gets jittery while drinking coffee. Yeah. So I'm okay with it. What I don't like to do anymore because I've kind of changed my approach with intermittent fasting. I used to be a big fan of this. I'm not anymore because, mm -hmm. you know, for my hormonal health, maybe not the best thing in the long run, mm -hmm. especially where I am in my life right now. Um, but what I, I don't like to do with coffee is like use it as a quote unquote appetite suppressant. So even if I am having coffee first thing in the morning, I always make sure that I'm eating now. I try to eat before 10. So okay. that's kind of the rule for me. That's interesting to switch up on intermittent fasting because it really shows that you know, there are trends out there and we try them out, but sometimes they're just not right for us. I mean, look, I was, I intermittent fasted for years and mm -hmm. I loved it and I love the mental clarity and there's so many different benefits. I think fasting is, I mean, it's a really ancient tradition with so many health benefits that it's undeniable, okay? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I am now in my 30s, you know, fertility is something that's on my mind like, you know, for some time in the future. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to hormonal health, you know, putting your body under such stress, especially given the fact that we already live stressful lives is maybe not the best thing. G still, okay, with all of this in mind, my eating window is still about 12 hours, okay? okay. So at one point I used to stretch it to like 16. Mm -hmm. I don't do that anymore, but 12, 13 is fine, you know? So you kind of have to, you also have to like, change your stance on things depending on where you are in life. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, like both Nish and I have this belief that it's like strong beliefs loosely held, which mm -hmm. means that it's okay to change your mind. That's really great to hear. Um, and the last one I have is berberine. It's a very hot topic. Ozempic is a very hot topic. <laughs> and I'm hearing berberine is the nature's Ozempic. What do you think about oh, that? So, so go ahead. <laughs> okay, berberine is not nature's ozempic. It is nature's metformin. It helps with blood glucose control. It's not this miraculous weight loss mm -hmm. drug. So I just need to correct people because yes. 
the mechanism in which that in which berberine works is very similar to metformin. Mm -hmm. So it's not like when you take berberine, you're going to shed all this weight. That's not how it works, but it really does help with blood glucose control. Mm -hmm. So yes, for that purpose, I really do like berberine. And controlling blood sugar levels is very, it's very important. It's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. It's very important. So doing that is very, but like it is absolutely not dysempic, which is, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like we need to be delusional about our goals and manifestations, but not <laughs> supplements just magically shedding the pounds, <laughs> no, you know, that's not of how our it works. body. <laughs> um, incredible. So that wraps up our conversation. Thank you so much for joining us today. Can you share with our listeners where they can follow you, follow the brand, listen to your podcast, et cetera? Of course. So you can find Array at Array.co mm -hmm. or on all social media platforms or Array.com. That's online. Mm -hmm. um, I'm at Sif Hyder on all social media platforms and my podcast is the Dream Bigger Podcast. And you can find me at Plenty of Niche on all <laughs> platforms. That's it. Yeah. That's um, amazing. Thank you so much for joining us today. This was so much fun. Thank you for having Thank us. You. This is so great. Thanks for tuning in. The code I mentioned at the beginning of the show is summertime. Let us know what other topics you'd like us to cover by connecting with us on socials at FatFitFun. We'll see you next time.